Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Michel Lander. I'm the Dean of Education uh, here at the RSM, which means I have the distinct pleasure to be and responsible for all the education that we offer. So all bachelor programs, master programs, and MBA programs. And uh, I will be talking to you through uh, the session this morning, a little bit about the program, a little bit about the general idea of what we do at RSM and how we like to do things. And I have Denisha with me to from a student side also to give you a little bit of a, an insight. Uh, at any point, at the end, we do a Q&A, but if you have really burning questions, do feel free to answer, uh, ask them uh, during, but preferably at the end. Um, just as a side note, I am a graduate of this program uh, some time ago, uh, so you might end up standing here at some point if you do this. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, there you go. So what we'll be talking to today is what is uh, IBA, why choose IBA, what are we doing in the program, and then we have a little Q&A. So the whole idea of IBA is that it's a general, master, a general bachelor's program to prepare you for a career in business. What does that mean? It means that we will be covering the major fields of discipline in an organization. So that ranging from marketing to logistics to finance to strategy, right? So it's a broad program. What it also does, and I think that is really the USP, the unique selling point of our IBA program, is that it is truly international and diverse. And that means you get to collaborate with people from across the world. And that is really something in a globalizing world, although we see hints that that might not be what our current government wants, but hey, there you go. It is really a skill that you must master. And by being in these groups, in this, <clears throat> in this international classroom, where you do many group projects, this is really something you get to practice. And that is a valuable skill that you will enjoy for the rest of your life. Another unique feature is that at various points throughout the program, we will be engaging with either firms or NGOs, not just so that we not just give you the content, but really rather also focus on how does that content work with practice, right? So not in an ivory tower, but really getting your hands dirty. Uh, and that those are always really fun experiences uh, and, again, unique learning opportunities. These are some of the major fields that, we'll be, uh, that we will cover in each of these years, uh, and we have a specific flow uh, through the different years, which I will talk you through in a minute. So why study IBA? Well, first of all, RSM is a top-ranked institution. Um, and, uh, in fact, last week we got renewed for one of our accreditations, and over the last year, we actually got two other accreditations renewed, uh, which means that we are 1% of the business schools around the world that has triple accreditation. What does that mean in practice for you? It simply means that we have very high quality standards uh, in order to be able to pass these accreditations. So you will get top quality education. It's as simple as that. And only 1% actually has that. So it's a quite, a, quite a unique feature. As I mentioned, it's truly international. We have over 60 nationalities in a classroom. And that is really, really remarkable. Uh, if you go to places like Maastricht, uh, they have an international program, mainly Germans. Uh, this here, really, 60%, is, uh, 60 nationalities is truly, uh, is truly remarkable. What we also do is we prepare you for your future career because we have a dedicated career center uh, and a careers team that will help you find your way to the next step. And maybe not already in your bachelor, maybe after your master's thereafter, but it is there for you, also in the bachelor's. And we will try to help you also with internships, uh, exchanges, and I'll li a little bit on that later on as well. So there is dedicated support also to make sure you land well after you finish your studies. And another, which I think is, uh, uh, super important, and you will see it coming back very, very often, is that we are very much a mission-driven institution. The mission of the RSM is to be a force for positive change in the world, and this is not something that we uh, take lightly. For instance, if you will walk around the Mandeville building, which is next door, which is our home building, if you will, you will see I will statements. 
Those are pictures taken from faculty, from students, where they make a pledge to themselves, uh, to the future, if you will. I will, and I have, I will future-proof education as a means to commit yourself to a goal. So that campaign is really important to us. Additionally, what we do is we try to closely align ourselves with the UN SDGs, so the Sustainable Development Goals, or 17 of them, and we try to incorporate these in our education as much as we can. Uh, really to understand that going into business nowadays um, is really not just about the financial bottom line anymore. It's really about making the world a sustainable place, and that needs to be part and parcel of the curriculum that you have. So all courses try to incorporate as many SDGs, or at least the most important ones for those particular courses, into their curricula. So it's a unique combination of, of reasons why you should come study IBA here. So what does year one look like? Uh, year one, uh, we call discovering business. Uh, coming from high school, going into uh, a university is already a, is already a transition uh, in and of itself. Uh, so here what we do is, is getting you familiar with some of the key fields uh, that are central, uh, but also try to help you onboard into a new life, so to say. And we do that through the professional development and mentoring. This is a course that runs the whole year, which is basically, in the, in the first instance, helping you to study. So how do you study? How do you manage time? How do you manage feedback? How do you collaborate? And that's offered throughout the first year to give you that soft landing. Then you will see there are two, and they are basically in, uh, in pink, uh, which are more, let's say, applied courses, and, and more general courses where you apply the knowledge of the previous blue block boxes that you see below. So the strategic business plan is where you really work with the company, providing them with advice. So it is working together in a group, really getting your hands dirty. And then we have the content-related courses, uh, which you will see here below here. Um, you have the usual suspects that are more tricky than others, uh, particularly math mathematics and, uh, and uh, spreadsheet modeling are usually quite, quite seen as quite tough. But I can guarantee you, if you commit yourself to it, it is a full-time program, you should be able to manage this. But it requires dedication. Uh, currently, we're also revisiting some of the, uh, some of the elements of the curriculum. We, uh, we continuously try to update uh, and, and try to innovate in the curriculum. So, for instance, we are now working on a quantitative track. So, all the quantitative courses will be a, a more of a longitudinal track where you continuously repeat and hopefully remember better in terms of the, uh, the quantitative techniques that you need to master to be able to study here successfully. So this is year one. Yeah? Uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for that. Um, just to give you guys a student perspective of what was just covered so far, just to introduce to you, my name is Denisha, and I'm an Indonesian student. I studied in the UAE, and I'm a second year IBA student, so I, I just went through all those courses. So. Um, as Michelle highlighted, uh, IBA is truly an international course where you are encouraged to work with everyone of all different uh, cultures and backgrounds. And one of the ways that we really applied that is in the strategic business plan course. Now, uh, this course runs from block two all the way to block four, so it is uh, quite long. And actually, uh, starting next month in November, our current first years have to already start working with a company. So SVP is all about collaborating closely with a company of your choice. It could be somewhere in the Netherlands, in Europe, or even beyond that. But it is all about producing a well-researched and relevant report, providing strategic advice to that company and also the university. Now, this is truly a special course for me because it taught me a lot of hard skills, how to research well, um, reading out the financial statements of the company that I was working in, but also soft skills. You really have to know uh, how to present your findings and also working well uh, with your team. Now, a little bit about how this looked like for me and my team. Um, well, you work with a team of five and you have a lot of regular company meetings. 
you're only a first year yet, you're given a lot of responsibility uh, by IBA. Uh, they really entrust you to keep the stakeholder relations, so whoever the contact person of the company is, you will be in co uh, contact with them throughout the duration of the SVP course. Now, as you work with your team a lot, you will develop such a strong bond. Well, with uh, my team personally, uh, they are now some of my closest friends because we've spent so many meetings together just drafting all these reports. Uh, but you do uh, bond a lot with your team. And after you've written these reports, you present them not only to your TA, your teaching assistants, but also other teams through interactive seminars. So this is me and my team at one of our final uh, seminars for SBP, presenting our uh, final wrap-up conclusion of what we found for the company. And this is truly special because uh, you really get to give feedback to the other teams. The other teams also give feedback to you, uh, so your strengths and your weaknesses. And you also get to really explore uh, what other uh, teams found about their companies. So it was super diverse perspectives. And I truly have got to say, SVP has taught me a lot of transferable skills. I would not be able to uh, be presenting like this if it wasn't for SVP and other extracurriculars that we will get to later. But uh, you will truly learn a lot from the SVP course. And it is uh, truly remarkable. So look forward to it if you do pick IBA. Back to you. Thank Michelle. you. An important point that she mentioned is we give you a lot of responsibility. Uh, you're going into university. This is not high school anymore. It means that a lot of ownership is with you, right? We're not going to tell you when to study or how to study, right? It's up to you to do that. You make choices. If you decide to go into a fraternity, again, that's your choice. That's fine. But responsibility for your study is with you, right? And so also here, we trust you to do a good job with these companies because it is your study, right? It is really important that you take that ownership. All right, on to binding study advice. This is a must. Uh, maybe I foreshadow this a little. So the binding study advice is that you need to get all your credits of year one in one year. It's as simple as that. If not, that's the end of the program. Now, obviously, there are situations where there's personal circumstances or other circumstances that have prevented you. If these are acceptable circumstances, of course, we will waive the 60, right? We're not here out to get you, but we do need to make sure that we keep the pace, right? So that means you need to plan your work. You need to make sure you take the exams. You need to make sure that you hit all the marks in between. Quite frankly, because if you don't have year one, it's very hard to start doing year two, right? I mean, then we go into the advanced stuff, and if you don't know the basics, we have an issue. So you need to get all your credits in year one. And again, we are not out to get you. This is really also to keep you in pace, but also to give those, if you have made a choice and you later on feel that IBA was not your choice, or was not the right choice for you, we get to that early on, right? We don't get to it after three years when you've wasted a lot of your parents' money. Right? So it would be good if we find that out early on. You also get a mentor, again, in the, in the PD course. Uh, we also have study advisors. So really reach out also for these resources that you make sure that you, again, land well, learn how to study well, learn how to plan well, so that you have that soft landing and are able to actually meet these 60 credits. Again, if you commit yourself, it is possible, right? I mean, uh, living example right here, right? All right, then we go into year two, which is exploring, uh, exploring business, and we go into um, some more depth in certain, certain areas, but also, again, uh, we try to branch it out a little with more specialized courses. Uh, a couple of highlights here. Again, professional development. We had it in year one, but we continue it in year two. Because there are some basic skills that you need to learn, but in year two, we build upon that, those basic skills to the next level. Uh, the PD course, professional development course, is also something we're looking at to uh, potentially restructure. Uh, but plans are simply in the making. They're not final yet. 
the research project is also a very interesting one. So here again, it's about applying knowledge to content, uh, and you really set up your own research project uh, in that process. Again, it's about that you're at the university. A university is a scientific institution. Ergo, you, you do research, right? It, your advice needs to be properly structured. And one of those places where we do that is the research project. Uh, another highlight of uh, what I find is a very interesting course, technology management. Uh, the, the, f the faculty member that teaches that course uh, has recently very much upgraded his course. And what he does now, um, you have to write two essays. The first one is formative, which means you don't get a grade, right? It's simply to give you feedback on how you did. Why do, does he do that? Because he lets you use ChatGPT to help construct that essay. And you get feedback on how you prompt it, you get feedback on the output, whether you cited it properly so that you're not committing plagiarism, and you get that formative feedback to help you understand how can you improve that. And then the second essay is for real, right? And then you can choose whether you want to use ChatGPT or not. And of course, we study behavior. So what did we find? We found that those that got a lot of feedback, so they had still a lot to learn, opted to go back to doing it themselves for the final. And those that got positive feedback actually started using ChatGPT more, also in the final project. Interestingly, and here comes the human factor, those that used ChatGPT had a well-structured, better structured, better arguments, more citations, but less creative. Those that wrote it themselves, they had much more variety in the solutions that they brought to paper. Fantastic insights, right? And if you think about that and how you use your work, these are the kind of things you want to be thinking about. What, what is my role with technology? How do I use it? But what's the human factor? Fantastic course uh, as a highlight. Then, uh, then we get to year three. And uh, whilst in year one and year two, everything is mandatory, there's no choice. Right. In year three, uh, what we start doing is allowing you to diversify or personalize, really. Uh, this is also the year where the IBA program meets the Dutch program, where we jointly, where these two course, these two programs come together. So you will also see different faces in the classroom, uh, uh, and and you will jointly go through this. It will be taught in English. Don't worry. We, we won't suddenly switch to Dutch. Um, but you have options in year three uh, to choose from. First, you could do a double degree, which means you go to another partner institution as well, and you end up with two diplomas instead of one. Uh, another option that you can do is, uh, or that you have to do, is a track. This is basically the final proof of competence. You will write a research report there, which is basically the integrative element for the whole study. And uh, we have seven tracks uh, from which to choose. And this is kind of to showcase already what you could be doing in the masters. So there's a finance track, there is a, 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 a more of a decision-making track. So there are options to choose from such that you can kind of think, what do I want to do in my MSc? Is this something that I like? Let me sample it, if you will. Uh, there's also the option to do a minor. Minors are meant to be uh, intra-faculty, uh, so it's not the idea that you take a minor off RSM, rather that you take one from another faculty on campus, be that the economics faculty or the, the history faculty or the communications faculty, uh, but it is to broaden your knowledge base, right, also into different disciplines. Uh, you can also opt to do an internship. Uh, these are then uh, for, uh, for that same period, so that's about four or five months. Or you can go on an international exchange. Uh, we're very lucky. Uh, we have a partnership network of about 175 schools that we work with globally. Uh, so ample choice, uh, so to say. Uh, and, and I did an exchange myself, and I can really tell you uh, it is always a very... Uh, it's a very pleasurable experience if you get, again, to step out of your comfort zone, meet new people, meet new ways of working, different, different environment really enriches you. So, again, it's a good option. Uh, other than that, you also have other things you can join. Uh, for instance, uh, the, uh, the study associations or study trips. Uh, what is also a very much a highlight, which I think is, a, again, a unique thing that RSM has, is that we have a case club and they engage in case competitions. So what does that mean? 
uh, they train uh, lots in the weekends. What they do is they practice solving business challenges, and they do so under different, uh, different uh, conditions. And then we send them off to ca international case competitions. So if you go to the Mondeville building, you'll see on the third floor, you see a wall with all the awards that they've won over the years. Uh, I was lucky enough to go with them to New Zealand where we became world champs for case competitions. And again, it's a really, really, it's student-led. They learn a lot themselves, they train each other, and it's a great set of skills that you will have if you participate in this going forward. Really, really, I recommend that very much. And we have the I Do project, and the I Do project again, I want to highlight as well, this shows our mission, is where you provide strategic advice to NGOs, to non-profit organizations. Again, we want to live our mission, and through the I Do project, that is one way we try to do that. So here's what it, uh, what it looks like. So you have on the first... Uh, on the first half of the year, you have the, uh, the option to do a minor, an internship, or an exchange, or electives. And then in the second block, that's where you choose the track. So one of these uh, six, there are now seven uh, for the next year, um, for you to choose from. As I mentioned, uh, about 400 students of ours go on exchange to 200 schools uh, that we have, and, and really they are anywhere and everywhere. Um, again, you can find this information on the website, and, and there's lots to choose from. Obviously, we do have to do selection, right? We don't have 20 slots at every school, so to speak. Uh, so it will be determined also, part, uh, also on the basis of your grade and your motivation. Uh, so if you really want to go to Australia, you better work hard. All right, what do students do after graduation? Um, interestingly, a lot of them actually stay at RSM, so we must be doing something right, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, and they usually move into one of our MSc programs. Uh, we have 14 of them, so again, plenty to choose from. Um, anything from strategic management, financial management, uh, accounting, uh, human resource management. So, or, again, all kind of different disciplines that you can go into. Um, and it is basically an expectation. Because in the Dutch labor, labor market, a bachelor's is, is often not seen as sufficient. This is different from some countries, where you move into business after you finish your BSc, and you might come back with an MBA. Dutch labor market really requires you, or the expectation, the implicit expectation is that you have an MSc. Uh, so you can do those with us, <clears throat> or of course in one of the other universities. But hey, why would you? Uh, and then, or uh, an alternative that we see is that they take a gap year. Again, you've worked hard for three years, so I can well understand you might want a short break um, and travel a lot or, uh, or work a little. And we do see some, but that's, again, as I mentioned, a very small percentage that actually goes to work right after. And then they come back for an MBA. As I mentioned early on, we have a career center and there are dedicated staff to help you uh, um, really to find those vacancies that you want. Um, 1,200 a year on the website, so that's quite a lot. So we do a lot to make sure that you also land well after your studies. Uh, and we have a study association with RSM STAR. It's a study association, so they basically organize all sorts of activities, both content-related but also uh, more uh, social types of activities throughout the year, and you, be you can become a member as soon as you're an RSM uh, student. Okay? We also have a Mentor Me program, which is a mentorship with alumni, where you can, that's a voluntary thing, you can sign up and engage with alumni to, again, have them as a sort of mentor coach throughout the studies. Um, lots of students actually make use of that service, and we offer that as well. Um, and we have networking and career fairs every year, multiple times, to, uh, to again, get you started with finding a job. They also, offer webs uh, they also offer workshops uh, for CV writing and, and cover letters. So where do our students go to? These are some of the top employers and the, and the fields that they move into. Lots of them actually move into consulting um, and financial services. 
we pride ourselves with a very good relationship with especially the Dutch multinationals. We were founded 50 years ago by a group of multinationals because they actually wanted to have education for their senior management, which did not exist in that time in the, in the form that we have it now. Uh, so this was a school founded by multinationals and it is a school that still has a very tight relationships with the business world in that sense. All right. Uh, this is a numerous fixes program. What does that mean? It means we have a fixed number of students. Uh, and th that's the number that can come in, and uh, no more than that. That's different from our Dutch uh, mirror, mirror program. That's an open enrollment, so we can have as many students as we want there. This one is capped, and it's capped at 750. Um, and what does that mean? It means that when you apply, we will look at the criteria that we've listed and we rank order, or at least we, our admissions team rank orders students and then start sending out uh, application letters or at least uh, invitations to come. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that we stop with 750 uh, because um, doesn't mean we stop at 750 because not everybody accepts, right? So if you are not in, uh, listed within the top 750, it doesn't mean you don't stand a chance. Last year, we, I think we got to number 1300 or so uh, that finally got the, that also got a slot in the program. So it doesn't mean with 750 we close the doors and, and thank you for playing. So don't get worried or upset if you're not ranked within the 750. Uh, that doesn't mean necessarily that you don't get in. Uh, we only have two numerous fixed programs in the Netherlands, and ours is one of them. Application is 15 January, and the results will be announced on the 15th of April. And again, uh, don't worry about your rank early on. Uh, it will not necessarily mean that you're not in. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we also have a Dutch program, a Dutch mirror image of this. What's the difference? Well, uh, um, it has open admissions, as I mentioned, so there we have about... 1,100 students starting each year. So that's an uh, even more massive program uh, than this one. Another difference is, uh, well, that's there you go. Another difference is that here you have 60 nationalities in the Dutch variant, of course you don't, uh, because the majority, because it's taught in Dutch, is Dutch, right, uh, obviously. Um, Again, you will meet the bachelor's, the bedrijfskunde, so the Dutch uh, variant students in year three because we then mix the two cohorts. Uh, but as I mentioned, we will teach that part also in English rather than in Dutch. Application, again, just, uh, you, you, I assume the slides will be available afterwards. Uh, I'm seeing nodding on that side, so that's good. So you don't have to note this all down, uh, but <coughs> You register on StudiLink, and you have to register on our own system as well. It's a two-step process, so don't stop after step one, because then you won't get in. Very simple, because you haven't completed your application. And there are stringent deadlines there, and it will close, right? And there is, there, it has no, there's no use in sending us an email, I'm sorry, I was five minutes late, can you please reopen? Doesn't work that way. You need to be on time. Uh, and then in April, that's when we, uh, we do the ranking, and then we send the offers out. And it needs to be accepted in two weeks because otherwise we move down the list uh, to other students that are uh, lower ranked, if you will. Uh, and we stop the waiting list on August 1st. All right, so tips. Apply early, right? You better get it done. Don't wait until you're in a time squeeze. Uh, who knows, maybe the system crashes, or you know, everybody does it at the last minute, and then we have different issues. So make sure you apply early. Read the website, because there are clear instructions as to what you should and shouldn't do, and what you need to upload, and what, you, uh, and what we definitely need from you. So read it, and don't forget to send these things. And never cancel a study link. I don't know why, but then things go seriously wrong. Uh, and be patient. As I mentioned, right, uh, application with average number 1250 were eventually offered admission. So it's not, again, it's not with 750 that it stops. Um, numbers, uh, tuition fees, 12,700 uh, for the Dutch, because it is a Dutch public program, is uh, for the Euro uh, Dutch and European students, 2,600 and one. I didn't make up the number. 
living cost uh, housing is difficult in the Netherlands and also in Rotterdam. So again, if you are accepted, start finding a place quickly because it's not easy. Uh, we have housing on campus, uh, but again, uh, it's busy. So try to, again, find, uh, find a place quickly. Helps you with your landing. If you have to do that whilst you're studying, it's not a very good combination. Um, we, we, uh, I think very important also, if you need a residence permit, uh, this is something we will help uh, in uh, obtaining. Uh, so there will be uh, help for you there. Student support well-being, uh, again, a very uh, important topic for us at the university. Lots of things are happening there. Uh, so we have a peer support program. We have also in the program, of course, the professional development. We have the pre-academic program. This is really to help you on board, but also to give you a sense whether this, this program is really for you. Uh, and, and, and that really also helps you kind of yeah, start off right. Uh, we have the Eureka Week, uh, but we also, what we have is the living room on campus. So this is a university-wide living room, which basically um, is open to you, where you can come in, uh, you know, shoot some pool, have a chat. It's really not meant for studying. It's really as a social place. Uh, we also have apps uh, where, you, uh, where you can provide feedback, but also help reflect on your state of mind so that we really know if there is or if you are in trouble or if, if you are dealing with something that we can help you quickly. Don't hold it in. Uh, we have study advisors. So your well-being is really important to us, but we can only help you if you speak up, right? So uh, there are different ways to do that, but please do so. Um, there's also safe at EUR. Uh, that's more for social safety. So if you feel uh, unsafe in whatever way, shape or form, uh, this is a place that you can go to uh, to, uh, to report that, but also to get advice and get help. Uh, so again, we take your well-being very seriously. Uh, so please make use of whatever it is that you, uh, that you need. Also, you can talk to uh, IBA students on Unibody, uh, and this is, again, to help you a little, uh, a little to finding your way, finding out whether this is a program for you. Uh, so again, it's a free resource. Use it if you, if you, st or if you still have doubts about things. Um, it's there for you. Over to you. All right. Now let's talk about IBA student life, which is the fun part. So if I were to describe the lifestyle of an IBA student in four words, it would be work hard, play hard. And that's nothing further from the truth. And that it re really made my first year experience very, very special. And it is all up to you with what you do in your first year, beyond your studies. And that way you really, really grow as a person, you develop your social circles, and also your interests. Whether it be um, career and professional aspects, social aspects, and also um, sports. So just to have a little rough outline about what I did in my first year was I was involved in the case club that Michelle mentioned. And before I entered IBA, I had no idea what consulting was. I had no idea what in business I wanted to do, even though I was really interested in it. And being part of the case club really helped me define what that is that I liked, and that is consulting. So every weekend, uh, a bunch of IBA students in the case club, we come together and we solve business cases and we present them uh, to a panel of maybe um, faculty advisors, but it's mostly students like us. And the whole point of the case club is that we go abroad, we travel uh, and represent RSM at really prestigious business schools as uh, com case competitions. And I was really, really fortunate to go to Bangkok in Thailand uh, just in May with my wonderful team here, where uh, you not only meet a bunch of people from all over the world, from the best business schools around the world, you also get to really immerse yourself in that culture. So you could just tell how happy I was to be in Thailand. And um, besides this, being in the case club also enables you to create a network of like-minded uh, students and also uh, visit companies like BCG for in-house days and more trainings. We also have our very own RSMCC, the RSM case competition, where other schools come to us here in Rotterdam to solve business cases on Dutch businesses. So this year we had Tata Steel and Greenport West Holland. And I was a team buddy for the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And 
I think it was really like the best week of my IPA one because we did a lot of stuff around Rotterdam, sightseeing, but also obviously learning about business. And that is us at the gala at Carlang Seplas, a very famous lake here in Rotterdam. Another thing, I know most of you are also interested in sports. Um, the gym here is great. We have a very nice uh, sports facilities here, whether it be football, um, boxing, rowing, there's something here for you. But I'm personally into dance, so I'm in the Erasmus Dance Society, and we actually participated in the Dutch Dance Championship, and we got second place, so that's great. And um, this is us performing at the final year showcase. Um, so if I'm not, in a lecture room, if I'm not case solving, I'm at the dance studio here on campus. So yeah, it's a really great way for me to de-stress. And lastly, um, IBA, we're a very social cohort as well. So we have a lot of culture associations. Personally, I'm involved in um, PPI, which is the Indonesian Student Association. Also CSAUR, that is the Chinese Student Association, where we hold a lot of workshops, events, uh, for you to bond with other like-minded people. There's also ESN, which you will definitely hear of. It's the Erasmus Student Network. And um, it's a really great way for, for you to bond and just make really lifelong memories. So again, IBA1 and IBA in general is really what you make of it. Um, if you tailor it to the best of your experience and you make the most out of it, you work hard and you play hard, you will have uh, a great time in IBA. So really look forward to it if you do pick IBA. Back over to you. Yeah, thank you. Over to questions, I think. Can we turn up the light? I can see people. No? Can we not turn up the light? <laughs> Are there questions? Very hard to see. I see a gentleman in the middle there. Can you keep your hand up? There will be a mic, because then the people at home uh, can also listen in. Yes, good sir. How many students applied last year for this uh, study? How many students applied last year? Uh, uh, approximately 2,300. 2,300. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yes, front and A mic is on its way. Here, here, here. here. Oh. We'll get to you after. Yeah, what is the ranking based on? The ranking is based on, it's your GPA. Uh, it's your, if you have a, a relevant, well, uh, we have an admission session right after this. Uh, we actually have to start wrapping up soon, so we can only take one more question. But if you are interested in admissions, do check out our session, which is right after this. Maybe we can take one more question, but then we have to wrap up. Okay, then I promise the question here. So, uh, <laughs> famous sorry, last words. So, sorry, maybe it's for admissions as well, because I couldn't okay. see properly if uh, the, the level of maths and English is check when it's admissions, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then maybe one more question. Non-admission related, in the middle. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, the third year uh, that you were showing, there's yep. track, there's minor, there's exchange. What can be combined? So should, we, uh, should there be only one uh, arrow chosen or anything can be combined there? Let me go thank back you. to that slide. Give us a sec, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Too many clicks. Yay, there we go. Okay, so there's two blocks, right? You got the, the, the fall and the spring. So in the fall, you either do minors or an internship or an exchange or electives, right? So it's or, 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 right? So you can tailor and choose. You have to take one of the tracks because that's basically your capstone at the end of your studies. Uh, and you take one of the, one of the six here on the, on the, uh, on the form. What does a track look like? You have three content courses in that track, plus the project that runs behind it. The same setup for all tracks, uh, but you choose one. Uh, so as a student, you could do an exchange and you take a track, or you do a minor and you, do, you take a track, or you do uh, an internship and you take a track. That's the combination that you can choose, okay? All right, I think we have to wrap up. Uh, there is an admissions session right after, so do check that out. Uh, any questions, feel free.